Now it's time to learn how to read values in your photo. I'll take the little printed version of the value finder that's in the download. I've trimmed it and I've punched holes in the center. In the first course, I was teaching you how to see the values in your photo so that you could make the pattern. Now we're going to switch so that we can read the values for the actual pieces of the collage. So here's how it goes. I've placed this over the ear and you can see how that section of ear disappears behind the black. So I know that this is a value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is a value 7 for the ear inside here. Of course I can look at the nose. I can pick these areas out. The easiest parts to pick out are the blacks or the whites. Here's some black over here as well. And there's a little over here as well. Let's go to the next value, this dark gray value. Where can I find dark gray? And I'm here I'm just going to look around and see where a part of the photo blends right in with that black. And I think I'm going to get something right here. So this value here, value 6, is right here. And there might be some more up here. Yes, above the eye there's a little bit right there as well. I think there might be some over in this area. Let's see. Nope, that's going to be... Ooh, it might be just a little bit right here. But let's go to value number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's see. Yes, this area here totally blends in. That's a value 5. I bet I'm going to find something over here as well. Look at that. This area here totally blends in with number 5. That's its relative value. If I pull the number 3 over top of it, look how dark that looks in comparison. I know that that is not a value 3. Let's go up to, let's see, let's go up to this area in here. Have we moved out of that value? I can run it across. It looks brighter in the viewfinder there. Pretty well blends in with the viewfinder there. And I can see it. it's fairly distinct right there. And what if we go down to value, let's go value 3. So here's an area that looks, mm, let's see, definitely not value 2 because it sticks out right there. I think that's pretty close to a value 3 or a value 4. Ye. So I have a mixture here. So it's right in the middle of this 3-4 area. Again, this is an arbitrary definition of seven uh, uh, gradations here. So it's totally natural. There would be something that's right in the middle of that. And that's fine. Let's go to something even lighter. Here's a value 2. There's something up here that's a 2 as well, probably. Let's see. Nope, that's going to be a value 3 up there. So you see how you can go around and actually read those values. We're down here in the far corner. There's about as white as it's going to get down there. there. So there's a value 1 there. And I also see up here there's going to be some value 1 just along the very, very edge of the ear. So that's the black and white photo. But now we have a pattern here. So we're going to go along and we're going to say, okay, what value was that? Ah, that was a value 6 right there. Well, look at that. There's a piece of fabric I'm going to cut out there. I need a value 6 for that. So happens that I also need a 6 for that. But this particular piece blends along like this. So over here, I may be getting into some lighter, lighter values. No, you know, I might look for a fabric that has some texture on it then and, or if it really came down to it, I could actually separate that out into another piece. Now I don't want to redraw my pattern at this point because it's on my foundation, but small things like making two pieces out of one, that's fair game. So look over here, here's a nice bright piece, and I'm going to look at the value of that one, and sometimes it really does pay to check. Oh, look at that. So we've got a value 4 right here. And so that piece right there is going to be a value 4. So that would look for a value 4 fabric for that. Now, can you do it on the color? Of course you can do it on the color as well. You can also, let's look for this area down here that we said was a 6. Well, if we look here, there's a 5. 
there's a 6, and there's a 7. So I think we've got 7, 6, 5. Now in this particular paper, it might look a little different, but then everything on here is relative. So no matter if, if I read this as a 5 here, and I read it as a 6 over here, it definitely is a 6 over here. Look at that. This is why I like to stay with one or the other. Don't try and mix values between one and the other because how you read one is not how you're going to read the other one. But nevertheless, I think I would still read that as a value six right there. This is the one that blends in the strongest. But therein lies the challenge. It's a little harder to see the values in color. Color just has a different processing mechanism in our minds and our brains. And the black and white photo removes all of that element. So I suggest you, you use this black and white, and hence the reason that when we made this little um, photo sandwich, we labeled this one pattern, because this is where we're going to be making our templates from and reading the values from. Then we'll combine it with what we're learning about how to find values in fabrics and how to sort them by value. We'll combine the two and then we'll start actually putting pep fabrics down to our foundation and begin making our fabric collage. Great, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.